Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. So in the second video, we're going to look at um, building a page in my bubble app where I want to be able to click a button, pass a parameter, make a call to Azure API management, and then display the response data. So we've got um, in my bubble demo API here, I've got this get person operation, which is a get operation. You can see I pass in a path, pass in a name, and then the policy, um, oh, click the wrong button there. The policy is going to do um, take the name we pass in. I'm just going to create a JSON object in the response, and then I'm going to return that response and just display it in the UI. So if we give a quick test here, if we put Mike in, you can see the API call will send a message, and I get back Mike Blogs as the name of the person who it found pretty straightforward so if I go into my bubble app so now we're going to take a look back in the plugins so before we looked at my um, my get skill list we're now going to look at get person so it's part of the same API as I showed in the previous video so things like the the subscription key set in the header is is all exactly the same the key bit that's different this time I'm just going to pass in URL here. Note that I've I've specified um, the square brackets for parameters here, which makes up makes the name pop up here. So I can um, I can make that private if I want to hard code it, for example, or I can allow the consumer form to pass in this um, this parameter. I'm also going to specify it as an action. So the key difference here is that instead of being data like in the last video, if we do it as an action. That means it's gonna um, it's gonna be triggered by something happening in the app, and when we set this up, we can um, go. What have I done here? Initialize this call. Oh, I'll be wrong. Specify a name. There we go. So you can see if I initialize it, it gives me back the, the sample data. You can specify the values and. Um, and I'll basically just register the data type for my call in the bubble app. So now we're going to have a look um, at the designer. So this was my skills list page from the previous video. And I'm now going to look at my get person page. So what I've done, dead simple page again. I've just got some text telling me about what the page is. Um, I've got a text box. So this uses an input from over on the left here. So I've dragged an input text box for the name of the person I want to search for. I've then got um, two labels, which I've just dragged in the text shape from here. And that's where I'm going to display the name of the person that returns from the API. I've got a message just where I, for, you know, to help me understand what's happening, where I can say here's, you know, it's calling out to the API. And then I've got a button that I'm going to click and when I click the button, it's going to then do something. So what we have to do next um, in Bubble is we need to go into a workflow and we have to create an event. So we've got here when the when the person button's clicked, so you can you know you can kind of link your event up to certain things happening. But um, if you want to add like a second event, but what I'm going to do is um, I've got when the person button's clicked. The first thing I'm going to do is um, set the state of the of the um, the text boxes. So what you do here is you go into custom state, and you can create a new state that that you define. So um, I created. Um, you'll see I created one called text. You can just give it a, a type as well, and then you would save that. And then basically what you do is you just set the value of that state um, in workflows, and then you can configure. Um, which, like, on, on the form, you configure the text box to look at that state for its display value. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. But what I'm doing is the workflow, when you click the button, it sets the, the message to get an info from the API. It sets the, the surname and the username text box to be blank. It then makes a call out to the API. So here, this, this is where I've got the search box box um, so you'll see here I've got the input search names value so you can, you can kind of click and just like we did in the last video you're just picking which element it is and I'll pick the value from that search name so that's the input text box 
So I'll pass that as the name to my proxy in Bubble um, for calling the API. That'll basically call the API, the data's gonna come back. I've got to pause here just to visualize, you know, just to make the visual easy that something's actually happening because that API is gonna respond really quickly. Um, after the pause, I'm then gonna set the state of the text box for the name to be the result from my API call. And then I'm gonna set it to the name property here. So you can see it shows up because it knows from the initialize before, knows I've got a name and a surname. So I pick the name and then I'm gonna do the same with the surname. I set that to be the surname property. So I'm just linking that to be step four's result. And finally, I'll set the, the message where I say I'm calling the API, I'll just set that back to empty string. So that'll display correctly. Now, what I need to do next over here, um, there's no special properties you need to set on this text box here. But if you notice here on this text box, this one and this one, you'll notice in these properties up here, I set the dynamic data. So I'll be, um, so I'll set it to text surname and then you get the properties and this is where my custom state that I created that text field uh, state I can just make that show up here and that basically lets me um, lets me display that value in that text box I think I might have to just get rid of that bit as well to put it back to how it was so that's really it. You just, you know, you've created the API proxy that calls API management. You've wired up these UI controls to um, to display the state value in the workflow, which triggers from the button. You just sort of call the API and change the state values, and then we just preview it. So if I click the preview button and open it up here, so let's see, I put um, Mike in the text box. And you'll see getting info from API. And then we display the Mike Blogs as the, the name that came back. So really, really simple here. One of the things you can do as well, actually, you can do um, kind of debug it a little bit here. So we call Mike 1 and do step by step. So you can see um, the button click fired. So this is just stepping through the workflow. You can see I set them to, to empty. You can see them changing. I then call get the API, so nice and quick there. We do that two second delay. And then we set the state here, so you can see we've set it to mic one, set it to blogs, and set that one to null, and that, that's the end of the workflow. So really, really easy to call API management, get some data, get it back, display it on the UI, and then, you know, as I said in the previous video, that opens up the opportunity for me to um, basically build services behind that um, API management. So maybe I use a logic app to connect to SAP or I use, you know, connect to Dataverse or something like that. There's some quite cool stuff I can do. Um, but, you know, from the perspective of prototyping your API, Bubble's actually a really easy way of, of kind of getting up and running and trying stuff out.